the one or two minute delay. May I have a roll call, please, Jenna? Mayor Cooper? Here. Ms. Ara? Here. Mr. Roth? Present. Mr. Westbrook? Here. Mr. Cooper? Here. Mr. Roth? Here. Okay. Um, number one on agenda is proposed Walmart sign for Sally Beauty. Hi. I guess Hi. that's you. Come on over and sit down, class, sir. All right, we have some comments on this. We got your pictures, by any chance. Oh, you know she's what? Got, she's got me. Here's the Sally. I didn't break mine. Did I see minutes or we don't have minutes? You know? We don't have minutes. Okay. I thought they must have been old ones. That I saw. Okay. Um, comments? From Brian? And Brian is actually here. How you doing, Brian? Mr. Mayor, how are you? Very good. Could you read your comments for us? Please? Sure. Did you want me to read them um, in their entirety or summarize? In their entirety. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, memo dated January 4th, 2014. The subject is Sally Beauty Supply um, for replacement signage. The applicant is relocating from their current tenant space, which is Unit 34, to a smaller unit in Macedonia Commons. In doing so, the sign is being updated to reflect the current corporate logo and design. The proposed sign is 3 feet by 13 feet or 39 square feet. In addition, the under canopy sign existing in the pedestrian walkway will be updated to reflect the new logo scheme. The size of this small sign was established early on when the retail center was constructed. Therefore, the area of this sign is acceptable. My review is based upon information contained on a sign illustration dated July 9, 2013, and the application dated December 16, 2013. I reviewed the request for compliance with the approved signage criteria for Macedonia Commons. The following elements of the proposal do not comply with the signage requirements. One, sign area is determined by the width of the tenant space. For every lineal foot of tenant space fronting on Macedonia Commons Boulevard, an applicant is permitted two and one half square feet of sign area. The applicant's new tenant space is 15 feet 4 inches, which entitles them to 38.33 square feet of sign area. The proposed sign is 39 square feet, which is just over the permissible amount. The sign must be reduced slightly in order in area to comply with the requirements. Two, the height of the sign shall not exceed 30 inches, and the proposed sign is 36 inches. The letters the sign must be reduced, um, I keep saying letters, but it's actually the sign. The sign must be reduced in size to 30 inches or the applicant can seek a variance from the Board of Zoning Appeals. Simply reducing the letter size, the sign size to 30 inches will more than bring the sign into compliance with the sign area requirements. Um, that's the 38.33 square feet. If just reducing that in size will, will bring them into compliance with the, with the requirements. The letter returns in the trim caps shall be painted bronze, and the proposal is to paint the returns in the trim cap black. The colors must be revised to reflect compliance with the standards. The sign shall project 12 inches from the face of the building, and the raceway depth shall be 7 inches. The proposed sign appears to project 13 inches from the building face because the raceway depth is, pro is proposed at 8 inches instead of the required 7. The applicant can reduce the raceway depth to 7 inches to comply with these requirements. Five, the, ra the raceway shall be painted white. The sign illustration states that the raceway will be painted to match SW6105, but this, that this number does not appear to be identified as white. This should be confirmed with the applicant. In my opinion, the items noted in this review are minor, and if the applicant agrees to comply with the signage requirements for the commons, as noted in this review, I believe the request can be approved subject to a final administrative review um, by staff for compliance. Absent this action, the applicant will need to seek variances from the Board of Zoning Appeals. All right, are there any other questions, comments for this young lady? Are you willing to cut the signs down from 36 to, or the letters, signs down to 36 to 30? I have revisions. Oh. Can I get those? Thank you. Um, I have a couple things. I just actually got this project. But there was letter of uh, landlord authorization approving the signs as of July. And so I have a copy of that that I've brought along as well. Um, Good. It appears to me from all of the revisions that obviously our customer, the national sign contractor for Sally's, 
didn't get a copy of the master sign code class. So, set that over, they sent the revisions, they cut down the square footage, taking care of item number one. We're now under 38.33 square foot. Um, the size of the letters are 30 inches um, and below. The only additional item is that the, the logo is still 36. Um, it goes with the sign. It's the scale of the proportion of the letters to the logo. They'd like to keep that um, the way it is. It's, it's mostly the drop shadow behind the, the logo that, that makes it appear that way. Um, the letters, all the colors, the projection being 12 inches, they've corrected all of these items um, to make them conform. The raceway colors or to be the whites. They've listed all of those items on the drop. Right. Uh, Mr. Mayor, just uh, quickly looking at this, looks like they did address um, all the comments with the exception of the one that the applicant noted, which is the 30-inch um, height maximum requirement. Uh, the way Exhibit A of the development criteria reads, it says all signs shall be a minimum of 24 inches and a maximum of 30 inches in height. Um, and it does say the sign letters can be on two lines, which this is. So it's, it would require an exception to um, the sign criteria for the mis miscellaneous stores um, that was established uh, by the Planning Commission um, in September 4th, 1994. Even, even though it made the revision, it's still not going to pass code variance? Your, um, hang on a minute, maybe I didn't understand you. Correctly, the letters are 30 inches, but the logo is 36. Is that what you said? Yeah. If you take so the letters are 30 inches. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Right. But the logo, if you include, do you see how the it, it looks like it's a book opening up, and the lower the black that is technically part of the sign, although it's made to look like the background. So in other words, the letters are 30 inches, that logo is 36. This right here you're yeah. talking about, right, correct? If you, yeah. if you look where you're measuring three feet, it goes to the beauty supply at the bottom, which is part of your sign. So from the base of the B in beauty to the top of the S mm -hmm. in Sally, that's three feet. Okay. That whole thing has to be a maximum of 30 inches. Okay. Even if it's on two lines. Even if it's on two lines. So, throw those away. Sorry. That's okay. Let's try this one. Brian, do you want to? Please. Plan B. Plan B. I got it. Did you guys see the letter? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's it. No. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Good exercise. <laughs> You're looking trim. Buff. Is this one better? Give up my copy even. Yeah, the, Mr. Mayor? Yes. I mean, this sign is, is still three feet tall. It's, it's still, still not conforming because it has to be 30 inches for both characters. Mm -hmm. yeah, total, height of the total height of the sign. Both characters mean the upper Sally and the lower beauty supply. Mm -hmm. Correct. Both lines. Both lines. Not just on Well, it doesn't need to, but you can get a variance, which means that you. I don't believe they're interested in that. Um, we'll have to cut the sign down again. But we can make it, you know, assuming everything else is good, we could make approval contingent on being 30. That, and if you want to go back tomorrow, say, hey, do you Go to PCA, just you need to reduce it or yeah. And just send it back in before we issue the permit, we can make sure that it's thirty inches tall. Right. She had said they wanted to make they wanted to give the approval to them so. All right. Well then we're going to have a condition. We're going to have a condition stating that the overall height will not exceed thirty inches. And we can approve it with that condition unless there's any other questions, comments? No. All right, do I have a motion? Move to approve it with the revised submission with the condition that the overall sign height is not greater than 30, 30 inches. Right, right. 
Mm -hmm. Correct. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you need your letter back from Doug? Okay. Opposed? All right. This Thank is, you. This is new, for right? For cooperating. That is, huh? Yeah, I mean, this part right here, I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like that, don't you? I think it's kind of cool looking. Actually, this is exhibit A. Wait, oh, you can go. <laughs> but before we get off this subject, we need to sign. Thank you for cooperating. Appreciate it. In November. If you want us to pass around one of these, I'll start it. I'm writing the condition on it. You're writing the condition, and then we'll sign that one. Yep. Okay, that's all I need to know. All right. Uh, next on the agenda, proposed Walmart sign for original mattress. Do we have, is that you? You brought your bodyguard with you. <laughs> yeah. Come on down. Hi. I'm uh, Major Harrison of the Spring of the Sign, uh, located at 4811 Van Ness Road, Ohio, 44131. Do you have a card? Do you have a card? All right, we'll get that. I want to hand it to her. Yeah. Very good. All right, we have some comments from our planner on this, Brian. I'm Major Harrison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, January 5th, 2014 uh, memo that I'll be reading from for Original Mattress Factory proposed signage. The applicant's requesting a 6.25 foot by 12.75 foot, approximately 79.69 square feet wall sign for their tenant space located in the crossings at Golden Link. My review is based upon information contained on a sign illustration dated October 13, 2013. I reviewed the sign for compliance with the approved criteria for the crossings at Golden Link, which requires compliance with, quote, local regulatory ordinances. Section 1179.03 F2 of the Macedonia Planning and Zoning Code permits two square feet of identification signage for each lineal foot of tenant frontage. The applicant's tenant frontage is 40 feet, which provides them with 80 square feet of identification signage. Therefore, the wall sign complies with the area limitations of the code. Please note the applicant's occupying two tenant spaces, and that is how the 40 feet of frontage is derived. The second tenant space, looking at the sign illustration, is the unit that Windstream previously occupied. The sign criteria for the crossings shopping plaza does not require specific colors like some of the other shopping centers in Macedonia. However, the proposed sign is comprised of individual channel letters with white faces. In my opinion, white is an acceptable color and matches other signs in development. All right, any other questions, comments for this gentleman? All right. Um, is this the old gold guys? Is that Anna Winston? Yeah, I think they're going to open that up. Sure. Both units. I'm not sure who the main previous tenant was, but they are occupying and we'll be taking over. I'm kidding. Me? That's a cute baby. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any other comments, questions, or can we send him home with this child? <laughs> or we should be if we have him that size. Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Say aye. Thank you. Say aye. Aye. That's a cute baby. Oh That's a cute baby. Okay, Major, you're on your way. All right, thank you for coming to Macedonia. I appreciate it. Bye bye. Right. Bye bye. That's good. All right. That part. Get it done. Makes it even worth it, huh? How cute. Did you see it? All right. Um, now, um, we don't have it actually, we don't actually have it on the agenda, but uh, Brian has another proposal here. And on this one, since it's really, really wordy and it's hard to understand, but I have the book right here if we have to 
to look. Um, this is the only B4 zoning area in the whole city. This is my take on it. Um, this area has had a lot of problems in the past only because we don't seem to have any businesses that go in there that succeed. We have a new restaurant in there. Um, there was a restaurant there before. Uh, B4 zoning actually um, is, is highway use, so you can say a restaurant is a highway use, a C store is a highway use, a hotel motel, that's highway use. But one of the things he was talking about doing is a flower shop. Now, I'm not really against anybody trying to do business in Macedonia. But this is going to be very, very, very difficult. What, what you're basically saying when I read this is if we deem it acceptable use, then we can move forward with that particular retail, whatever it would be. Right? Yeah, correct, Mr. Mayor. Um, the, uh, the building commissioner approached me um, over the weekend and, and said that uh, with the B4 district, which is true, it's it's fairly um, limited with regard to the amount um, of uses that's uh, allowable in that district. And <clears throat> wanted a mechanism without amending the code and including a bunch of different uses in the B4 district, wanted a mechanism to be flexible to allow the planning commission to have, again, some flexibility in working with uses. Um, a very good method to do that is a similar use determination. Macedonia does not have that now in your zoning code. And I, I think in large part it's because your code is, is, fairly, um, is, is fairly older and this approach of a similar use designation wasn't around at the time when your code was written. And it just hasn't been amended in. Um, as a planner, it's something that I think is, is good for a commission to, to have this um, ability to do this. If effectively what it does is if the Planning Commission, if a use is presented to the Planning Commission, the Planning Commission goes through a process in evaluating that use, determines that it's of similar, um, it's a similar use or substantially similar to that um, of uses in the business districts, then the Commission can through a conditional use process effectively amend the B4 district to allow that use. Um, and it's, it, it's commonly referred to as a similar use determination. Um, rather than trying to upfront guess what uses may work for the B4 district, it gives you some flexibility in doing it through the conditional zoning certificate process. Once the commission says, let's say it's the flower shop, once the commission goes through the process <clears throat> and says that a flower shop or that particular retail use is substantially similar to those allowable in the business districts, that then effectively amends the B4 district to allow it. So if somebody else comes in in the future on a different property and wants to put that same use in on another parcel that's located in the B4 district, you don't need to go through the conditional zoning certificate process because you've already amended the district to allow it. I happened to uh, I happened to be in the grocery store, and the owners of this particular establishment over there on Highland Road approached me and uh, said that they lost two tenants because of the zoning, and uh, I believe they were going to have a groomer there, and they also were going to have the flower shop, as the mayor spoke of, with a candy shop. Now they were allowed the restaurant. Uh, Pronto running over there, but um, they they you know lost two tenants because of this, and uh, so they didn't know what to do. So then that's when we kind of approached uh, Mr. Ladd to find out what we can do so that this uh, this lady can uh, you know find some tenants that will be able to go there. Well. Which comes first here, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> Do you want to talk about changing the zoning? Because when you have somebody coming in to us 
as uh, per section set forth in 1137.04, there's a big process they have to go through to come in with something. So if somebody's going to come in with something and go through all of this, they're still not uh, sure it's going to happen mm -hmm. because it's going to go then to council and it's going to have to have a public hearing and you might have some people that would complain about it. We get complaints from people over there already because of the motels right, and the so motels. forth. And I don't know if that's really a good spot for businesses to locate, unfortunately, because of all that. Well, so we're in a little bit of a quandary here. It's, it, it's good that, that Dennis and Mike want to try and help these people get something mm -hmm. in there. Right. All right. Um, it's really a shame, though, that this man bought this property or woman, and it was before, and it's still before, and it's going to remain before, unless you change it to something else. But it's such a small, just that one parcel mm -hmm. right there, and it's the only one in the whole city. Right, and with so, all the businesses over there, and then the La, La Quinta that's right across the street allows yeah, animals yeah. at their hotel yeah. and that would have been perfect for mm -hmm. business yeah. people yeah. traveling that right. wanted to you know maybe even drop mm -hmm. their dog up let it get take a bath during the day while they were on a bus you know business call throughout the day i thought that would have been a good little Absolutely. location for them that, that um, might even be one mm -hmm. of the the locations but again too um it was we're strictly discussing this and I know it's a shame that they are not in a good spot. Right. And I've witnessed multiple businesses fail there. They just never make it. It just isn't a good spot. It happens over and over and over. So for the city to work with them, the city's not against working with them. All right, but they, it, there's going to be a lot of things involved. It's not just us saying, okay, come to planning commission. If we feel it's good enough, we're going to say, okay, you can do this. We will recommend to council that this is what we would like to do mm -hmm. to make an exception, but then you have to go through a public hearing and you know how that can get to be. Next thing you know, you got some people yelling about some stupid thing and then you have these people spending money to bring it before planning, bring all the drawings, bring everything that they have, do everything the way they have to do is set forth in 1137.04. Then they come here, they go through all of that, then they go to council and for some reason council says no. See, and that's the procedure every single time or one time. Uh, that's just one time for for a specific use. So in other words, we could go forward with this with nobody putting up money and go to a public hearing uh, at council. We could recommend this to council. Correct. The, the text change which I wrote up in this memo provides the mechanism for you to have the process of a similar use designation. That, that text change will require your discussion like you're doing here today, um, and then a recommendation to council to amend the code to include this. Council will have their public hearing on whether or not they want to amend the zoning code to include this language. Once they amend the zoning code to include the language, council's done insofar as the conditional zoning certificate for a similar use designation occurs all here, except council under 1137.04e, council has to confirm um, any conditional uses approved by planning commission. All right, so in other words, if we get this through and we say we're going to do this, um, it goes to council, Council will have a, a public hearing on the policy. Correct. Not a particular. Correct. Right. On the All policy. Right. So they'll have a hearing on that, and then after that, it can be up to us, but still at their 
Mm -hmm. Correct. It's the, the planning commission will make that determination if it's the whether it's a, let's say the dog groomer, they come in with on one of these B4 properties and the dog groomer requests a similar use determination. Planning commission finds that the request is reasonable and substantially similar similar to other uses in the business district. Planning commission can make that determination through a conditional zoning certificate. Once that occurs, under your code in 1137.04, council has to confirm the conditional zoning certificate that planning commission approved. Well, now, um, that's all well and good with the dog groomer. I can see. Yeah, and the flower shop. Uh, the, the dog flower shop, shop is, is not highway. I know. The, um, How would that be similar? I don't know. But the, uh, the, the groomer's already gone. The groomer already, we just gave them approval on their signs a couple weeks ago. The uh, groomer, they went over by Highland over there somewhere. No, Valley View in Highland. They ended up finding a different location that was. Uh, it's very, very unfortunate. Yeah, I know. That, I felt bad. That, yeah. that has been going on there forever. Right. <clears throat> I have to. Mr. Mayor, if I can, um, I stand corrected. That that conditional use uh, majority vote of council to confirm conditional uses of the Planning Commission is only for non-residential uses in a residential zoning district. So it wouldn't even apply. So once you approve the conditional zoning certificate here, it's approved. Well, uh, in the effort to help economic development, then this makes sense to do this. And then we get them to change that. I mean, we're discussing people. So your discussion is valued. If we do this, it moves forward, goes to council, and we can explain to council what we're trying to do. We're trying to give them help. But on the other hand, we can't blatantly um, let something go in there that wouldn't be like that because we could end up with um, uh, say, for instance, another uh, another situation would come up where you would have a similar type business, and they say, "Well, you let them in, but two years ago you didn't let us." In. Right. That's the only thing that worries me. Well, I make a motion that we go on and put this in front of council. Well, did we need that tonight, or Do we, we need were that just or discussing? Uh, what I would recommend is that Planning Commission, just for the record, um, show that you formally amended your agenda to include this discussion, and then a um, just a uh, recommendation forward to council to consider the amendment, I think, at that point. Well, you, you would need legislation. So the first thing that we have to do tonight is, uh, uh, this was strictly a discussion, but we can formalize it by somebody making a motion um, to consider this change where's to- the, Where's the paper, where's his memo on this? Right here. Okay. So to do what that memo suggests. Okay. So do we have a motion? We'll make a motion that we, uh, Brian, you want us to include this into our topic tonight, right? Into uh, our discussion? The yes, ma'am. The zoning uh, tax amendment? That'd be my preference would be that you amend your agenda to include the discussion, just for All the right, record. So we're amending the agenda with the motion. Do I have Was a second? Second. All right, we have amend. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so now, we're actually in a serious discussion. Should we consider doing this? And um, I say yes. How about you, Kevin? Yeah, I think it's nice. Would these would these always be a conditional use? Uh, mm -hmm. it, correct. Doesn't uh, any conditional use approved by the planning commission, pursuant to section eleven seventy one fifteen, must be confirmed by a majority vote of council prior to the applicant being issued and required? Uh, any required building or occupancy permit? Yeah, that's that section I was referring to where I stand corrected. That is just for non-residential uses in a residential zoning district. Okay, so, so that, that, that wouldn't apply in this apply. case. Yeah. So any other options, something different this would be to make an amendment to add, you know, you have to think of all these different types of things that you want to add into it, which is 
difficult I, to predict. What right. I, I don't think. calls on that space from barbershop, dog groomer, bakery, uh, well, the restaurant now. Yeah. All right. First all of all, of yeah, the restaurant's right there, so that's good. All right. Is this just going to be for B4, or are we putting this in the code in such a way it'll be for every district? Just B4. Just B4. So just this one district. Mm -hmm. The other districts, when you go through the B uses, all have conditional uses for other things that aren't listed as a permitted use. When you get to B2, it accepts everything that is allowed in B1 and then adds some more. You get to B3, it accepts everything in B2 and then adds some more. So. And then you get to B4, B4 and bam, it right. just hotels, takes everything hotels, away. Hotels, gas stations, car washes, and yeah. restaurants. And very, so it's very, very limited. And, and that would have been a good place for a Tesla charging <laughs> station. You know, and, that's about. <laughs> and Mr. Mayor, t typically zoning, again, we're. I don't say anything begrudging about this code, it, it's older. So typically zoning now doesn't do the approach that Mr. Sachs just said, which is what we call a Euclidean approach, where what's allowed in one district is allowed in the other and allowed in the other, a trickle down zoning, if you will. Um, that's, that's not the approach that is typically taken now with zoning codes. Um, so we're, we're a little different and then with regard to uses in districts, typically your B1 is your least intense commercial district and least and most restrictive in terms of the number of uses. And as you gradually go up to your B2 and your B3 and ultimately to your B4, your B4 is more wide open because it's your more intense district located typically on highways, which is what your um, purpose says, it's, or, it's highway oriented uses. Well, you got to remember this code was with, written with a quilt. <laughs> I do, I do understand. <laughs> so, um, so what we're talking about here is something that would just be for this area, just be for B4. Uh, it's still at the planning commission's discretion, and we will have discretion because we can't put something in there that that uh, somebody could come back and say. Why did you refuse us five years ago, but now you have this new rule and you're taking it in? Right. I, uh, I said, we, I make a motion that we, uh, we go for the B4 zoning tax amendment is to, uh, and to amend it to the code to grant the commission authority to make the similar use designation in accordance with the conditional use pr procedure set forth in sections 1137.04 and for it to go before council is that all right all right we have motion we have second, second. all right okay. motion just and your second. highlights right here is what you really want council well not to highlights the whole thing no i know just, that I, that's my highlighting so. i know but I, I just did that so I could reference back to other codes and then right. reference back to this. But that's what pretty much what we're going to be bringing to council anyhow for us, the commission, to have the authority as well, right? We are making a motion that we are recommending right. that they give us this leeway for this okay. one zone. All right. That's so. what it boils down to in, in language, not like you use. <laughs> Second? Thank you, Mr. Reed. <laughs> okay, I mean, so we have... Um, a, a motion on the table on second and a second all in favor aye aye, aye. opposed all right now uh, you'll have to send this through my office with a request for legislation dennis you know and then we'll get the legislation to council and mr mayor um just looking at it and talking through with mr Sachs, we found um where we could probably clean up some of the wordiness and make it a little little tighter so we'll do that and send it through your office yeah, just Thanks. because i had to read it 18 times <laughs> i i wanted you i wanted i wanted to get my money's worth you got it <laughs> well the see this is good when you're here and you have to read it then you're gonna in the future make them shorter and easier oh. to read right <laughs> and janelle will love that yeah. all right do we have a motion to adjourn make a motion to adjourn Second. all in favor Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Oh my God, I should have been, I'm supposed to have her dance class.